making a Stuart model steam plant part 84, improving the way that the steam turret mounts to the Stuart 504 boiler valve after a comment a while ago from my customer in the USA. He mentioned at the time that it didn't look strong enough, but actually it is strong enough, but it doesn't look good. I machined a piece of brass tube, threaded one end of it to fit into the turret, and the other end was silver soldered into the union cone, which in turn is secured to the valve using a large union nut. In this clip I'm removing the steam feeds to the engines. Oddly enough, the union nut on the centre valve was more difficult to remove than the one on the left. By moving the position of the steam piping connected to this valve with my other hand, it allowed me to remove the nut with my fingers. Once I'd disconnected the steam pipe into the engines, it was a very simple job to slacken off the large union nut which holds the turret to the valve on the top of the boiler. Not exactly in scale with the rest of the valves, it allows me to isolate the main steam feed from the boiler. The main reason for wanting to modify this turret is the fact that the whistle valve is on the end, which over time could have caused the original turret fitting to work loose. I need to take this turret back to its component state, so I'm removing the valves and the whistle. This is easy enough to do when you can see the residue from the Loctite 542 in the threaded holes. The first valve removed OK, but the other two left the thread inserts in the turret. And here I'm carefully removing them with a pair of long nose pliers, being very careful not to damage the threads. Now it's time to remove the extension piece that connects this turret block to the main valve. If you want to see more details about how I made this turret, watch the episode in this series where I show the making of it. Here's the part I'm going to remake in the centre of this image. I drilled a bit of quarter of an inch diameter brass, I threaded one end and silver soldered the other end into the union cone. The thread was quarter by 40 threads per inch. Before starting to make this new part that fixes the turret to the boiler valve, I'm going to clean up the turret itself using some wet or dry sandpaper. It's a simple enough job and I don't need a surface plate for this component, just a piece of wet or dry sandpaper on the bench. What I'm doing here is carefully removing the nut that originally locked the part to the turret block, and I think I'll be using this to hold the gas pipe in place. My original intention in a moment of madness was to thread and silver solder the piece of piping to the turret itself. And that's why I'm cleaning up the central area using this Proxon motor tool. I'm now in the outer part of the workshop at my brazing hearth. And this is a small vice I bought a while ago, very, very cheap and extremely useful. You will notice that it has grooves in the jaws, which is great for holding pieces of pipe. Often I remove union cones from pieces of pipe, and that's what I'm attempting to do unsuccessfully with this large union cone on the main support pipe for the turret. The union cone was actually a tight fit on this pipe, and when I attempted to remove it, this is what happened. So this is no good at all, it's ready for the bin once I've taken some measurements from it. This union nut from the Stuart valve is very visible, and when I remember, that's why I didn't silver solder this part in the first place. Because the union nut is in such a prominent place, I want it to look just the way it does now. I fitted a piece of leaded phosphor bronze into the chuck of my Boxford lathe. The video for these sequences is running at a much faster speed than normal. I need to turn down this piece of phosphor bronze to 5 sixteenths of an inch, which matches the size of the hole in the union nut. And I will eventually thread one end of this 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. I've pulled a piece of metal further out in the chuck to give me a bit more space to machine the end of the part, which needs to be of a larger diameter. This part of the work I need to turn down to 5 sixteenths of an inch. And once again the turning operation is running at four times normal speed. The measurements taken from the original fitting tell me that I have to turn down this part to three quarters of an inch long. Even though this part can't be described as a high tolerance component, the main length of the part needs to be accurately machined to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. It needs to be exactly 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter because of the threading job that's coming up shortly. In this clip I'm using my micrometer and it tells me that it is exactly 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Time to drill the hole down the middle of the part. Very occasionally I make steam fittings and actually forget to drill the hole down the middle. 
I can't even blame old age for this. It's from the same school as silver soldering a pipe union on the end of a pipe, then realising that you've forgotten to fit the union nut onto the pipe first. In this clip I'm using a tailstock die holder fitted with a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch die to cut the thread that will fit into the turret. Not only is this a 5 sixteenths thread, it's also 5 sixteenths of an inch long. And now, it's top tip time. Saving time, provided you don't compromise the quality, is always a good idea. There are many different ways to turn the end of a pipe union. This I find to be the simplest. I fit an existing pipe union cone into the chuck, and then I set the tool angle to exactly the same as the angle on the end of the union cone. I look at the numbers of the top slide's handle vernier, then I fit the new part into the chuck and turn the end of the part to be exactly the same as the union cone that was fitted earlier. While I'm doing this, I'm looking at the part that I'm copying for the distance between the tapered part and the bit that doesn't need turning. And once it's the same as on the union cone, the job's more or less finished. I just wanted to clean up the end, but I rotated the tool too quickly in the opposite direction so I didn't get the best finish in the world, but it was improved by a bit of wet or dry sandpaper. And here is the finished component, a thread on one end and the union cone on the other end, but the union cone is part of the main assembly. And it's not made from brass, this part is made from phosphor bronze. All I need to do now is enlarge this quarter by 40 threads per inch hole that's in the turret to a hole that can be threaded 5 sixteenths by 32. I'm going to have to drill the hole tapping size to accept this tap. The tapping size drill that I'm using is 9 30 seconds of an inch. I'm making sure that the turret block is perfectly level and at a perfect 90 degrees to the twist drill. Once I drilled the hole, I threaded it by hand. This is a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. And in this clip, the video speed is running at 200%. After the drilling and threading operation, I clean up the part thoroughly to get rid of the chips. Here you see the general arrangement. It looks better and it is much stronger than the original. All I need to do is fix part A to part B, not forgetting to fit the union nut. Please take notice of this next clip. I am not using Loctite 542. This is a retainer called Loctite 603. Unlike 542, this is not just a thread sealant. It will bond the two parts together very tightly. And the only way I'll be able to separate them is by heating the parts with a blowtorch, not to red heat, but quite hot. So what's with the cloth? Loctite 603 will remove paint, and I don't want to drop any onto the boiler's paintwork. The best way to assemble this turret is in situ, using a large barco adjustable spanner on the turret, and a smaller barco adjustable spanner on the union nut. Although I really didn't need to in this application, I left the part in place for a while to allow the Loctite to fully cure. I wiped away a very small amount of Loctite that had dropped onto the boiler. The Loctite doesn't attack the copper, but I didn't want to transfer this drop to the paintwork accidentally. And that is it for this episode. All I have to say is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.